All right, good morning, everybody. We are here to do a little overview of study abroad 101 at Miami University. Just to let you know who is here today with you, my name is Kevin Fitzgerald, Education Abroad Advisor. We also have Carrie Strader, our MUDEC coordinator, our Luxembourg coordinator. So if we have any questions, we'll be here to help. Uh, so what is study abroad? Studying abroad is the academic credit bearing experiences. Some of our students have the great opportunities to travel with their families to Italy. That's awesome, but that is not study abroad. Or perhaps you have the chance to go to Canada to go skiing. Again, this is not studying abroad. It's where an academic component is included in the experience. So you're, you're earning three, six, nine, a semester's worth of credit hours while also going abroad. Types of programs that are offered here at Miami University are MUDEC or our Luxembourg program, our faculty-led programs, exchanges, global preferred and approved programs, and we'll break down each one of these here very shortly. Okay, so we always like to start with our flagship program, MUDEC, uh, the Miami University John E. Delaboy European Center. And for those who are more uh, interested in this program and more in-depth information, this Thursday at 1 p.m., we will be doing a follow-up parent-specific webinar about this program where Carrie will be more talking about like how the classes work and the study tours work, et cetera. And here we're just going to talk about some of the general um, benefits of this program. So first of all, it's been, it's cel it just celebrated its 50th anniversary this past fall. Uh, we had over 700 alumni who have been coming for the last uh, you know, 50 years to participate on this program. Uh, you used to have to get on a boat and sail across to France and get on a train to get to Luxembourg. But now many of our students go abroad for a whole semester. Uh, we have around 100 to 120 students. They live with host families and travel to and from, as you can see in this picture, the castle, where they're taking their classes and eating their lunch and having lectures throughout the semester. And over the summer, we have a really cool program. It's nine credit hours. Uh, you're, again, based out of the castle. You're, again, you're with host families. But these uh, three courses that you take are very specific and very organized. And a lot of students will do this, complete a thematic sequence, uh, complete their global perspectives or any other Miami requirement that they might have. The other amazing thing about our Luxembourg program is that it is the only way to go abroad for a whole semester and act just like you're still here in Oxford, Ohio. You're earning Miami credit hours. You're with Miami faculty members. You're with other Miami students. And again, if you look at your bill, it's the exact same bill, right? It comes through the same bursar office, the exact same tuition. It's just every day when you wake up uh, as a student, right? You're jumping on a train, you're jumping on a bus, and you're traveling to and from the castle. And on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, there's the rest of Europe for you to be able to explore and learn from by visiting the local museums and uh, churches and all the other amazing sites there are with throughout all of Europe. So Luxembourg, our MUDEC, is a really good choice for those who love the Miami experience, want to be with some Miami students. Uh, out of the 120, I would say 99% are Luxembourg students. We do from time to time have other students from other universities. Or perhaps your student uh, wants their friend to go with them and they're at Ohio State or they're at Kent State or even anywhere else in the United States, they can come with uh, your student on the Luxembourg program and earn Miami credit hours that can easily transfer back to their, their institution. Uh, other students really like it because they're able to live with their European hosts. Uh, when you're living with a European host, you can choose like, oh, I would love to learn uh, the German language. So my host family could speak German or French or Luxembourgish. Uh, there are even a few that speak Italian or are extremely strong in English or even Portuguese. So lots of opportunities there for more intercultural learning in your host environment. And then some of the other cool things, uh, because Miami's been running this program again for over 50 years, uh, the students can get um, work privileges. We have an internship program that runs over the summer. Uh, some students really like that because then they will go for a whole semester have a great semester, and then stay over the summer and uh, add on to their experience with an internship and have a little bit of a deeper European experience. And then they're almost in Europe for a total of, I think, eight months, so just shy of that. 
And then also one of the classes that you take while in Luxembourg is called a study tour. So you and your whole course will go, or you and your whole classmates will go on an extended five day deeper dive onto your topic. We had um, some students recently who did their study tour in Helsinki and they were in the local museums and kind of learning about the foundation of uh, the Scandinavian countries and the education system there. Um, cool opportunities and students have a couple of different options to choose from when they're signing up for courses. Our next topic that we'd like to talk about is our faculty-led programs. What's awesome about our faculty-led program is that here at Miami, this is our bread and butter. It is amazing how many programs we offer, about 115 each year, both internationally and domestically. Uh, we have programs that are in New York City and Washington, D.C. and San Francisco and as close as Chicago. But then we also have um, amazing programs that go all around the world. I know Japan and uh, Australia throughout the rest of Europe were really popular locations. Um, what's nice about these programs is that they are short term. So they run over both our winter break and over our summer break. Some are short as two weeks, other are long as two, over eight weeks. Miami has been running a program in Spain where they go for almost a full two months, full immersion in the language and culture, et cetera, uh, as an example of a longer running one. Now these do change year to year, so sometimes uh, an office will run one one year and not run the next as they're trying to build up a number of students who would be eligible to go on this program. But really, if you're um, student is interested in going abroad over winter or summer, they should speak with their departments. Most um, departments will be running programs, know about what's going to be offered, what credit hours would be offered, so your student can really plan ahead. And sometimes this can free up a semester and they can knock out um, a minor or they can get ahead of a major or they can do a capstone project. And it really depends. So they should really work with their department, but uh, certainly our office can help with that as well. Um, Miami financial aid can apply, so it would be like scholarships and things like that which are available to our students. Faculty-led programs are really good for students who, are, uh, again, enjoy being with Miami groups, uh, like to learn well in experiential learning environments. Um, perhaps they have a favorite professor who's running a program and they're like, oh, that would be a really cool experience. Um, they also have are good for students who are paying Miami tuition, right? So if you do have um, an opportunity or if you have, if you're in-state, et cetera, these would be all great ones for you. And then also students can complete their Miami plan requirements or major and minor like we were mentioning. And I also would like to note that this is probably our most popular option here at Miami. Um, about of the 2,000 or so students who study abroad each year, about 60% participate in these faculty-led programs. I believe this winter currently alone, I think we have 600 plus students uh, who will be abroad or are currently abroad right now with Miami faculty members. And again, around another 600 plus uh, students will be going this summer. Um, and again, the, the, mo the reason that most students are going on this program is really the, the programs are you know, 12 to maybe 15, maybe 20 large. So you have a nice close-knit group of students. You have a professor who's done the program a couple of times. So they're really able to get in and get um, some cool experiences. Like we have a program in Paris right now. It's called Paris Culture Capital. You can only imagine the, uh, the amazing sites and places that they get to go to with the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower and, of course, the Notre Dame. They get to go see the the, burnt, the burnout edifice and what's going on and talk about what the future of that um, cultural icon will be. Um, our third large option here are transfer credit programs. So this is the second uh, largest option that most of our students participate in. And that's because these are transfer credit programs. They really have this huge swath of variety that you can choose from. So say you were like, oh, I need to go to Tanzania, or perhaps I need to go to uh, Buenos Aires, or I would love to go to Panama, or I need to go and do an internship and study abroad and directly enroll at the University of Sydney. This is kind of where that would all fall in. So again, we have our Luxembourg program, which is a great option for a whole semester long, and it's the same Miami tuition. But then we have these other programs, again, called transfer credit. And then with those, students would just have a greater variety of uh, courses and locations. 
Uh, it is a little bit more complicated because we offer so many options. Again, we really want our students to study abroad here at Miami, so we uh, make things complicated by giving you lots of variety. So the first, oh, how do we break that up there? Okay, so the first one we have here is exchanges. Exchanges are where students would pay a Miami tuition and fees, and they would exchange place with another student at a partner school. Or one of our most popular options is the University of Glasgow. Students pay Miami tuition, so that doesn't change on your bill. But then when you show up, you're taking courses at the University of Glasgow. Another really popular one is the American University of Sarja. You're learning in English with students from all around the Arab world about um, whatever topic you sign up for. And all those classes are the exact same classes that you'd be taking here in the United States. Uh, they just happen to be in the University of Sarja. Another really popular option are called Global Preferred. Global Preferred programs are programs that Miami allows students to take their um, Miami scholarship on. So if you go abroad for a whole semester on a Global Preferred program, your scholarship up to the cost of that program can go with you. So we do have a lot of students who are at Miami and have a Global Perspective or a Red Hawk Excellence Scholarship say two, three, four thousand dollars and if they choose a program perhaps they would want to go to um, the University of Cape Town in South Africa they can use their scholarship and go on that program. Uh, the last option that we have here is called approved. Approved are programs that students can totally go on but their Miami aid cannot go with them. An example of this would be most likely a winter or summer term program that a student is choosing to go on. Miami scholarships really are geared towards the semester, so they wouldn't be applied. But uh, a prime example of an approved program that's really popular here at Miami is we have a program that runs in the Galapagos. Students are learning about environmental science. They're engaging with um, snorkeling and the animals and the mega fauna that exist in the Galapagos Islands. It's an approved program. They're earning three credit hours towards their global perspectives. It's a cool experience that Miami perhaps wouldn't be able to offer through one of its faculty-led programs. So transfer credit programs are good for students, uh, especially exchanges are good for the students who are a little bit more independent. When you show up, there's gonna be some staff there to support you throughout your experience. But on a typical day, you're, you're on your own, just like you are here at Miami University. You're going to class and you're meeting new people and you're joining clubs and you're engaging in the culture where you are. A global preferred or an approved program, a lot of students like these, especially if they've never been abroad before, because they're going to have uh, an administrative staff there on site who are going to support them. Like, hey, this is how you jump on a bus. Hey, this is where classes are going to be. And it's going to give them a lot more structure. And then as your student really gets used to being in that foreign country, how the money works and the communications and the bus works, that administrative staff can start to back off. Uh, but say your student has a um, you know, struggles with some mental health issues or academic, uh, the administrative staff is there to step in and really support your student throughout the rest of their time abroad. So students really get the most out of studying abroad if they select a program with long-term goals in mind. So we always really want the students to be choosing a program that's best for them. And these are just some of the things that we threw up there, like is how long are they there? Is it a target language? Do they really want to learn the German or the French, or the Spanish, or the Italian. Um, some students really want to be immersed in a culture and learning the food and the language and the culture, and others are just there for more of a simple overview of what does abroad look like. And perhaps they go abroad for winter or summer, and then they transition that into a whole semester abroad later in their academic career. So we like to kind of, this is all available on our website, so you can certainly find that later, but, and we'll send this out. Um, to you all. I believe we already did, um, or we will. And this has a little bit of that breakdown. So as you can see, with Luxembourg, you're earning Miami credit hour, Miami tuition fees are charged, and your Miami scholarship. Again, it's just like being here for a semester in Oxford. It's just every day you're waking up and living in Luxembourg and the rest of Europe. Our faculty-led programs run over summer and winter. So it'd be just like taking classes here on campus, uh, tuition-wise but then you would have the program fees that would cover your housing and museums and travel while you're on site. We also have the exchange programs. Uh, you're charged Miami tuition and fees for those. Be just like if you're here on campus, except again, you happen to be abroad. 
Now, we didn't really touch on these because FSB does a great job promoting their own programs and advising on those. Uh, so certainly if your student is in the farmer school business and they would like to go abroad for a semester, they should check in with their advising. But what's, uh, the farmer school has some really cool semester long programs, say in Barcelona, in Maastricht, in Budapest, where you pay Miami tuition and fees, scholarship, everything goes with you. But the credit hours that you are earning do transfer back to Miami and they're not counted as Miami credit hours. Uh, we have our Global Preferred. Again, you can use your Miami scholarships, and then finally the approved. So how do you get started? What do we suggest for our students and we suggest for you out there listening? Uh, certainly start the research, right? So it's like, where do I want to go? Why do I want to go? Am I looking for specific courses that I would like to do? And we kind of like, that's why we say like, what's your, what's your career-oriented goal? Like, oh, I'm really into mechanical engineering, so maybe I should have exposure to German uh, language and German culture because that could be perhaps where I'm working someday in the future. Or perhaps, um, again, you're in the engineering department, but you're excited about our exchange program in South Korea, and it's a great opportunity to gain that experience in a, in a location where engineering is very important and growing in um, opportunities for career. Who would be advising? Um, let your academic advisor know that you're interested in studying abroad. They can help tell you what courses you should be looking for or how to save this or that course for your study abroad experience. And then also to come meet with a study abroad advisor. We have walk-in hours every day of the week. We have appointments for one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we meet with students. I believe our number from last um, semester is we met with over 700 students. We sit down one-on-one. -on -one. We'll talk to you about what are some of your options, what are some great programs. I have many students that I'll meet with perhaps uh, once a week for a whole month as they're kind of diving into what options exist for them, what would be a good fit. And then um, finally, they're like, okay, this is great. I've worked with my academic advisor. I believe that going to Shanghai for a semester is what I would like to do, and that's a great fit for me. And then financial needs. So how much is this program going to cost? How am I going to get it to fit in? Is it more expensive than being here in Oxford? Is it less expensive? What are some other scholarships that I can apply for? We do highlight that deadlines can be early. Um, some students trying to put all the money together, some of the deadlines are very early uh, so that they know well in advance if they're going to be able to afford the program or not. So we really always suggest about a year out because then you're able to not miss any deadlines. And then finally applying. The application process is different per program, but I will let you know applying is kind of the easiest part. The hardest part is finding the program, being yes, it fits academically, yes, it fits financially. And the application process is more of like, hey, this is me, I'm signing up and I would like to come. So it's not usually too competitive to get into a program, you just need to make sure that you are applying and ready to um, participate fully in the choice that you have picked. Uh, so this is kind of an example of our website here. Um, great opportunity. There's a lot of great information for our students and for our parents. As you can see up here along the top, we kind of have this like uh, drop down box. And resources is a really good one. There could be some options for when uh, students would like to study abroad. And if you would like to read more through um, financing or other resources that are needed for you or your, for your students. Um, so I've seen some questions have already come in, and uh, we were here to answer some more. And then I will just leave this up here so there's some contact information. Again, we have advising walk-in hours, um, our website, Facebook, Twitter, email, et cetera. If you could put questions into the chat box, that would be great. Um, I know a lot of people will have some. And again, our Luxembourg um, department will be here to give a one-on-one, -on -one, kind of talking about the program in more detail. Uh, so if you do have a Luxembourg program, we can answer some of the general questions. Certainly, if you have more specific questions, we can answer those at a later date. Um, the app deadline for Luxembourg 2020 is coming up. Our priority deadline is February 15th. Um, that's a great option to get your name in because we will be reviewing scholarships, et cetera, at that time. Um, but I will tell you, um, there's usually a little bit of space. So if your students drag on their feet, uh, many times we can still take them up until the end of April or so.
All right. Can I touch on the FSB abroad programs? Absolutely. So uh, again, students should really be reaching out to their academic advisors and to the International Programs Office at the School of Business. Um, they do have some well-trained um, staff, et cetera, to more specifically talk about these programs. But what's really cool is that the School of Business has partnered with institutions in certain locations. Again, our Barcelona one is extremely popular. I believe we have 50 plus students a semester in each of these locations. Um, students are earning credit hours. So what does that look like? In Barcelona, for example, there's four or five institutions that teach courses in English, that teach courses on international business, on finance, on marketing um, on management, students go abroad, take these classes, earn those credit hours while also, and then they would transfer back to Miami and be applied to their degree. Now, if you choose to do the FSB program, those courses are already kind of laid out and spelled out for you because FSB is built out into the contract. And then you would pay Miami tuition and then you would pay a program fee. And that program fee would cover your housing and some of the additional expenses, say, uh, the support staff that you would have in those locations. And then um, the applications uh, found for each of these different programs, if we go back to the slide that had our website, up here we have find a program or you can click on Miami Luxembourg and each one of those is going to be kind of how you would find your deadline. But the general idea would be, um, you know, October 1st for the following for spring. Um, mid-February, March 1 for the fall, and then for winter and summer, some of those can be really varying because they're not needing a visa, so some of the deadlines can be really late, but for the faculty-led programs, I would encourage um, you to apply early because sometimes they can fill up pretty quick. Again, especially the business program because there's a lot of demand and not very many So if we have a question about a Red Hawk uh, scholarship applying to FSB programs, absolutely for a semester long. So if you get a semester long scholarship, those can be applied to many of our study abroad programs. So certainly our Luxembourg, our premier program where you can take business courses, et cetera, your scholarship would be able to go with you. If you chose an FSB Barcelona, FSB Maastricht, you would be able to use your Red Hawk excellence on that as well, or any of our global approved programs. Goal preferred, yeah. Thank you. So if your student is current already registered for a program, they will be automatically considered. Yes, correct. On February 15th, we'll pull all the students who currently are um, have applications open and we'll be checking financial need, et cetera, to see what um, eligibility they would have for scholarship. So I'm seeing a question about pre-med majors. That is a great question. Certainly pre-med is a complicated mess uh, because each student is really their own unique story. Um, sometimes we have students that will come in here and they have a whole bunch of AP credit or college credit plus and they're easily able to take a whole semester and go abroad. Other students are here at Miami and this is the first time they've been exposed to certain courses and they have MCATs are coming up and they have this course that they have to take and that course that they have to take. At that point, it might be wiser to choose a winter or summer term program where you're going abroad and kind of like, okay, I'm not gonna take any math or science. I'm not gonna do any pre-med courses. I'm gonna choose a Miami faculty-led program, perhaps like our Paris Culture Capital, which is going on right now, and have an opportunity to go to Europe explore and enjoy and know that I don't have to worry about MCATs and my science courses for right now, but when I get back, I'll have to focus on those. Um, another option is that some of our students will do like a, a nursing program, like we have one that goes to the Gambia in Africa over the summer and they have a chance to get like hands-on and um, I believe the last time they were there, they worked in a maternity center and they were taking measurements and kind of doing some basic um, checking in with students or with um, patients as they were coming through the office. So that was a great way to have exposure about how um, health systems in foreign countries work and it could be something that's relatable to what you're studying but not necessarily exactly what you are studying. 
And so that's sometimes how you can see study abroad as a supplement, and it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm going to study abroad and just take my major or minor courses, but I'm going to use this experience to supplement what I'm already studying. So the question would be, does Luxembourg being not count towards the amount of transfer classes you have to have in your last 30 to graduate? So Miami does have a rule that you do need to complete your last 30 credit, year, credit hours on campus. Now that rule is really there to prevent students from, say, going to, oh, heaven forbid, the Ohio State University and then transferring to Miami their senior year and completing a Miami degree. Um, we have tons and tons of students who are actually seniors. Perhaps you were a uh, soccer star, a full ride, and after your senior year, you had a semester to um, still use, be scholarship eligible they can go abroad. We have a lot of seniors who will go to Luxembourg or any of our exchange programs or even our global um, preferred programs, and you can go abroad your last 30. Absolutely. There's a petition to get out of that because, again, it's not, it's still fulfilling the, the vein of what Miami is trying to do with that rule. And then, again, with Luxembourg, there's no transferring of credits. It's all Miami credit hours. Um, Luxembourg is the most seamless and easiest route to go because, again, it is Miami faculty, it's Miami tuition. It'd be just like if you're here on campus, um, except you just happen to be in the heart of Western Europe. So another question is what kind of scholarships are available? Um, again, I left this page up here. Under resources, one of the tabs is financing, um, and it's a very good, I, let's see if we can't jump out to that website there for you all. No. Oh, if I'm being told I will not be able to, sorry about that. Um, but again, this is kind of ooh, an example of our page that we have. And under our resources tab is where you'd be able to find um, more information about what scholarships would be there. But we do have lots of different ones, and most of our students are automatically um, considered. Um, when you do apply, you do not have to indicate first or second choice. Uh, we do restrict applications to only two programs at a time. So if you are looking to do a faculty-led program, um, you certainly could apply to two, and you could certainly kind of have both as first choice um, until, but you will at some point have to start paying a deposit and confirming your location. So at that point, you would indicate which one you're going on and which one you are. So I'm seeing we live out of state. I think recalling that we would pay an in-state tuition at Lux, but what about the FSB programs such as Barcelona, like the one you mentioned? Unfortunately, there is no uh, in-state tuition at Miami for a study abroad program. Um, so for out-of-state students that nothing changes, your, your status stays the same both with Luxembourg and our FSB programs. If you do choose to go on a faculty-led program, there is a 30% discount for out-of-state students um, per tuition per credit hour on those programs, which can be a substantial savings of two to three thousand dollars depending on the program. But unfortunately, for Luxembourg and or any of the FSB programs in exchange, et cetera, those do not have like a differentiation just because you're going abroad, whether in-state or out-of-state. Um, some students, if you're if you're out of state and you're already kind of like meeting the end of your financial resources just to be here on campus, um, we do usually suggest that you look at our global preferred programs. Uh, many of those can be affordable and or a similar cost, or again, two to three thousand dollars less than programs here offered at Miami. So if your students have very specific questions about programs in specific countries, they should set up an appointment with a study abroad advisor and research on our website. Um, a secret here is that it is winter term and we are working for the next three weeks, but there's nobody on campus to compete with your students. So certainly if you or your student would love to talk to one of us, we can set up phone appointments. Uh, we can do kind of like a, what are you, like a speaker phone situation where everyone can be involved. We can certainly answer those emails and um, we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. 
I really encourage you to email us at educationabroad at miamioh.edu with any questions that you might have either today or later, and we will um, can set up either that appointment or answer your questions right there. So I really do appreciate your time today. Hopefully you learned some good information. But again, don't hesitate to talk to us. This is what we love to do. This is what we do every day. And we really look forward to helping you and your students get abroad. Um, thank you and take care. Bye-bye.